Oh, yeah, good people. It is Thirsty Thursday morning here at Joe Boo's, I guess, secondary man cave up here. Actually, well, it's on the second floor, so it's still a cave. I don't know. But it is Thursday, and tonight we actually have a really important game for our Thursday night football game. We have the Cincinnati Bengals that suffered a loss last week, which they need to get back on track at five and four, going against the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, definitely MVP candidate Lamar Jackson, and uh, that should be a good one tonight. And I, I'm actually feeling really nice and refreshed. I'm gonna sand the floor downstairs, get that thing done and some varnish on here, and I'm gonna make sure we have a great night. Hopefully we'll have my man Game Time Brian. I know he's been busting tail, making sure that your mail and your packages get to you so as we get here the cowboys at least on paper are as healthy as they've been tyron smith has not been listed right now nobody's listed on the injury report now we do know leighton van der Esch is out but i talked about last night how damone clark has been quietly playing lights out he's got 60 tackles on the season with only one missed tackle, which he leads the NFL. Nobody else has 60 or more tackles and only one missed tackle. So shout out to Damone Clark. Another one of those players the Cowboys found in the draft sneakily that is making that defense really, really tough. Now, injury reports versus being nicked up are two different things. And to me, I think Tony Pollard is injured more than we've let on. You know, when we started the season, and let me pull up his numbers real quick. When we started the season, the first game against the Giants was like the perfect scenario for him. He had 14 carries, 70 yards, five, point, uh, five yards a carry. And see, I think the problem for the Cowboys is they miscalculated with the idea of, we're going to save some money to get rid of Zeke Elliott. Okay, that was the bottom line of what the Cowboys wanted to do was save that money on there. And Zeke Elliott's production had dropped off. I mean, let's be clear here. I know everybody still says we should still have Zeke. I don't have a problem getting rid of Zeke. It's replacing the production. See, that's the different thing that you have to understand. New England for years, I not, not this New England right now, but for years, New England would let go. Pro Bowl players and great players and stuff on their roster, but they always had a plan B to replace them. The problem for us is we looked at getting rid of Amari Cooper and saying that, you know, Noah Brown, who is playing better now, mind you, um, that Noah Brown and a hurt Michael Gallup were going to replace the production that we had between Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson. And that was a fail. And we repeated that by saying, we're going to move on from Zeke Elliott without replacing it or the notion that Tony Pollard can be Tony Pollard and Zeke together. And he's not. His body of work is best suited to be an outside runner. And the first couple of games of the season, it ended up being that Tony Pollard had more touches than anybody else. The first couple of games. And I said right then and there, Tony Pollard's not going to last through the season if they continue to do that to Tony Pollard. His body is not able to really take that constant pounding like a Zeke Elliott would. And him running up the middle is not a good thing. So you went through the giant game where he had 14 carries, 70 yards, two touchdowns. Um, and then against the Jets, I think was the one that really started to, the, to begin the pounding. 25 carries, 2.9 yards average for 72 yards. He had a great game against the Cardinals. He had that one real big run. 23 carries, 123, 122 yards, 50, uh, 5.3 yards per carry. But since that time, he pretty much has kind of gone downhill. And when you look at last week, um, where it's 15 carries, 55 yards, uh, 3.7, that's not the same Tony Pollard that we had before. We're talking about a guy who last year averaged 5.2 yards a carry, a touch. And right now, he's averaging 3.9 on the season. And so this is where the Cowboys have to wonder, is he hurt? Where he's slowed because he looks hesitant when he's going to the hole right now. And he doesn't seem to have the same burst. 
at the moment, going in the middle, I look at Rico Daddle and say, okay, Rico seems like he's got that burst where he can, you know, turn it on. And what I think the Cowboys need to do is, whether they believe that Rico is Zeke Elliott or not, is they need to use Rico Daddle more to let Tony Pollard get back into being Tony Pollard and to use Tony Pollard to his better assets, which is getting the ball in space and making moves. We have to remember, like Michael Gallup, like um, Terrence Steele, Tony Pollard is coming back from injury as well. And it may be that he's not totally healed from his injuries as well. And we have to go ahead and counteract it. It's great that Dak Prescott is able to sling the rock all over the place and is making hay with it. But come playoff time and when the weather changes, it's going to be harder to do that same thing. We are going to need a running game. Now, it's kind of crazy that Mike McCarthy had started out the season basically saying, I just want to run the football. And we have gone completely almost away from that to, you know, we're just letting Dak rip. We recognize that trying to be this short game, you know, run the ball, you know, that you're literally, here's, here's my analogy to this. Um, I remember the Coast Guard, you know, the Coast Guard has the C-150s, you know, playing, you know, it's painted orange stripes and white and all that. And they were doing like an air show. So they had those and then they have a couple of jets that were flying with them thing is a c-150 is a lot slower it's prodding and they had a helicopter that was with it so the helicopter can only go so fast the, the c-150 is no problem it's cruising just as no you know like that the jets are throttled down and you can see you know you're holding them back they're not doing what they were meant to do and it's kind of like if you don't get a little bit more power on it it's gonna crash and at some point you gotta let the jets fly and that's how it is with dak the first couple of weeks when we were trying to do just running in the middle and, you know, short game, you got those jets of C.D. Lamb and Brandon Cooks and Dak Prescott. You got to let those jets fly. And I get it. That's our strength of our team. But we're going to need to be balanced. At some point, we're going to need that running game. And this is the time to slow your roll, especially with the games that we have with Carolina this week, is slow your roll. Drop the production down for Tony Pollard to let him really get healed and into a groove and use Rico Gathers. That would be my thoughts. Now, again, I, what do I know? I'm a guy with a day job and a voodoo doll that broadcasts for, to you guys most of the time from a basement or an old ass 200 year old home. So don't take my word for anything. What's interesting, though, is, oh, I love this. Now, Dak Prescott at the moment is making waves um, throughout the talking heads. Um, they don't want to go silently. They, uh, they, they, don't, they don't want to admit what they see in front of their eyes right now. They are literally kicking and screaming right now about what Dak Prescott is actually doing. It's kind of funny, actually, uh, quite frankly. It's kind of hilarious listening to these guys lose their mind and Dan Orlowski you could almost see his head explode let's check this let's check it out let's check it out certainly is one of the best in the past couple years we've seen his legs be a bigger part of that conversation mm -hmm. and now the Cowboys offense under Mike McCarthy looks like a unit that Mike McCarthy's envisioned for it this offseason. Dak Prescott, mm -hmm. the athleticism's back, the arm strength is there, and the decision-making has been relatively consistent. He is playing good, consistent football for the good. Dallas Cowboys. Absolutely. In fact, our resident and beloved former Cowboy Marcus Spears took that one step further here yesterday. Dak is playing the best quarterback right now in the league. Right now, over the last couple of weeks, outside of C.J. Stroud. Mm. I don't like getting into these conversations about, is Dak the best quarterback in the league? No, he's not. He's playing the best right now. Mm -hmm. That's what Marcus said. So, here, <laughs> so Danny, let's talk about things that are and are not a surprise. It was a surprise to me that you quoted Mark Twain. That I did mm -hmm. not see coming when you said that the reports of his demise had been greatly exaggerated. He didn't even exaggerated. know he was quoting Mark Twain, but... By the way, that's Mark Twain. Correct. <laughs> 
<laughs> it, is, it is not a surprise to me that Marcus said right now Dak is the best quarterback in the league and you don't agree. Mm-hmm. Why? Because well, Marcus is wrong. And he's just pandering to Cowboys fans, and I love you, fella. But Dak's playing really good. The quarterbacks, if we're just being honest, who are playing better? CJ Stroud is playing better. Brock Purdy playing better. Mm-hmm. Jalen Hurts playing better. Jared Goff playing just as good. Tua playing better. Patrick playing better. Russell Wilson playing better. So Dak is playing really good, Hmm. but there are quarterbacks that absolutely are playing just as good, Hmm. and there are a handful who are playing better. Okay, so we welcome all of you joining us on Twitter right now as a result of those (laughs) comments from Mr. Orlovsky. What do you think? We had a whole big discussion yesterday about who is and who isn't still invited to the Prescott family Thanksgiving. (laughs) Jeff Saturday is in. Dominic Foxworth is out. Where are you? I'm like at the doorstep, like uh, maybe I'll go in, maybe I'll grab a plate, but I might go home. Um, He's playing good. You ain't invited, Kimberly. He's playing very good football right now. Mm -hmm. When you throw him in like the MVP cat, fine, throw every quarterback in. Like just like at this point, just throw them all in. I don't even care. Like (laughs) because the problem is like there's nobody has separated themselves besides to me like a CJ Stroud. Like as far as somebody I'm looking at who's so impressive week to week, Jalen Hurts, uh, Lamar Jackson. When we look at these quarterbacks, everybody's playing well. I just, I'm yeah. just so sick of, of the Dak conversation because I think the Cowboys. You're sick why of can't it because get on board with the Cowboys right you. now is because it's it's everything around Dak. I think they're playing well, but will they continue this? Will the pass pro be better? It doesn't have to be Dak is the MVP or Dak sucks. I just I want to live in a just, world where really it's like football. he's good. He's, he's good. Really good he's been so good. good though over oh, the last four weeks. He's he has good. over 1,300 yards, 12 touchdowns, two interceptions, two rushing touchdowns. Yeah. And I think the way it's looked for Dak Prescott, the improvising, utilizing mm-hmm. his legs to make sure plays are extended, I think Dak over the last four weeks, I think Dak is playing the best football. Over the Harry, last four weeks. Harry, you mean over the last four weeks he's playing better than CJ Stroud? Here we go. He's playing he's over the last yes four no. weeks. Over the last four weeks, Dak Prescott, you're 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 including CJ Stroud talking about the entire season. No. CJ Stroud's entire season has been better than Dak Prescott. That that's what you I think I, he's I'm playing better than CJ Stroud over the last four weeks. Bro, look at Dak Prescott Russell Wilson completion for weeks. Look at his completion yeah. percentage, Dan. The last four weeks in game. Completion percentage, Harry. Look at look at the plays that he's making. What are you talking about? Harry. I mean, he's playing good football. Do you know who has the easiest? Who has played the easiest schedule in the NFL? No, you tell me. Dallas Cowboys. You sure? Because I think Atlanta and New Orleans and those teams I have. The, the Dallas schedule. Cowboys have played two teams Got the red bottoms records. on the shoes. The San Francisco 49ers and the Philadelphia Eagles. They've been scored, outscored in did those Did that play good in that game? 70 to 33. I'm you just mean, asking you. Did you? Who, who was I'm just who was asking playing, you? Did that play good in the game versus the Eagles? Yeah, but you think it was more because unreal Dak or bad coverage on Philly? But you, that can't do. You can't say, "Hey, Dak, it's my job to make sure Philly isn't having bad coverage in the back end." So it, we they've can't been have it both ways, those yo. two games, seventy to thirty-three. Their turnover differential is minus four. Those are the <laughs> only would, two teams. He would have made it. He would have made it. Okay. Okay. He would have done. David would have done. He's the losing his mind sentence. right now. Dak Prescott is what? Very good. Very good. It's very good. Why can't we? What's Why can't like, we live? Like we, it's like we, we, like we, we live in like two different worlds. Either he's like the best, mm-hmm. or he Man. sucks. Like there is an actual middle ground Around, yes. here with Dak. He's playing very good. We're not saying the meeting. The, the 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 best thing that Dak has done so up, you know, lately is his legs. You just references his legs. Like being able to utilize his legs and improvise. Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, creating plays with his leg, making plays down the field because he's moving around within the pocket. We hadn't really seen that from Dak a lot since his injury. I've been kind of begging Dak. Dak is Dak playing, he's, he's playing the way he usually has for most of his career, which is good but to, but to But to sit here and say, to sit here and say that Dak Prescott is the to sit here and say that Dak Prescott is the best quarterback in the league right now? Hey, no. Look at I am Bishop. literally look, look at you literally. Oh no, we I got am Discord in the congregation. I, I, I like CJ Stroud too, but let's not forget against Carolina, one of the worst teams in the league. Okay. CJ Stroud didn't have his best game. Well, in well, that I, game. I gotta go to a break here. The funniest part of all of that is that while D Wood was yelling, Harry is trying to make a point by just showing me a piece. <laughs> The paper is like, I'm telling you, he just wants his point made whether the audience hears. Wow. Okay, so things get heated. 
Dak Prescott making people lose their minds. So, you know, as uh, you know, Dan Orlovsky points out that the Cowboys had the easiest schedule. Um, I'm curious. Let, let me let me pull up the Texans. Schedule, because I'm, I'm kind of kind of curious myself. Let's see. Texans, Texans. Let's look real quick. Cause I, I, I guess they're playing the juggernaut schedule then, too. Let's see. Da, 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 da. All right, so they lost to Baltimore. They lost to the Colts. They beat the Jags. They did beat the Jags. Okay. They beat the Steelers. They lost to the Falcons. They beat New Orleans. They lost to Carolina. They had a shootout against Tampa Bay, 39-37. And they beat Cincinnati. So, yeah, they beat Cincinnati. That's a quality win. (laughs) Um, But they've also had some stinkers against some bad teams, too. So, I don't know. You know, we can leave that debate up for discussion. And um, this is going to be a good week because we got the Eagles versus Kansas City Monday night. We've got the Carolina Panthers, another get-right game for us. And uh, as always, I appreciate y'all. Hope y'all have a great day. Peace. Up everywhere. You get dizzy, you probably throw up everywhere. You have to do that thing. You get the yeah, thing. dude. All right, you need to stop. <laughs> That's what they do. You get the you like you're doing something else. Just stop. <clears throat> That's what they do. And so I have a friend. That's all. All, all time. Every I, all you hear from him. He's I know. Make it so obvious. Dip. I don't even pack anymore like that. Pause. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it's called. It's called. It's called packing. Joey's pack. You pack. <laughs> <laughs>